Hi, I'm Becky, my channel's What Beck So Welcome back if you're a subscriber and welcome if you're new. Today I have finally got a normal Friday sews for you where I'm going to talk about what I've been up to and more practically today what I've been buying. So you will know if you watched me last Sunday that I kind of broke my overlocker. Well, I didn't break it. Something was wrong with it and it was chewing up my fabric. But it was causing me a bit of a headache. So I ordered some new blades and some new needles because I've managed to snap the needles in the process of trying to sort it all out. Um, and they were delivered on Monday, which I was really pleased about because I thought that's perfect. I can get it all fixed on Monday night, get it all working. So I took everything apart, went to go and change my blades on my overlocker and realised that I'd accidentally ordered the wrong ones, which was the one with the slightly longer blade on it and it wasn't going to fit. So I was really irritated with myself, went back off, reordered the correct ones. They didn't actually turn up till this morning. So I finally got them on my overlocker, did that in my lunch break today. And I obviously haven't done any sewing as a result of that, because as much as I enjoyed sewing my seasons of East uh, dress up, I really didn't enjoy not finishing it the way I like to finish my seams. I do like them to look that kind of lovely professional finish inside because I wear my ready to wear clothes most of the time. Saying that, I think you can see this lovely big stain on here. This is my dyeing my hair t-shirt because I dye my hair red. But I'm at home today and um, we've been doing lots of walking the dogs with our lovely new pup, Benny, and Pixie getting her under control a little bit more trained because she's been training with Benny and um, I had quite a long walk with them. So I'm just in walking gear. I've got some lovely cycling trousers on and I've got my scruffy t-shirt on, which just so happens to be one of the t-shirts that I use to dye my hair with. I do have some lovely earrings on today. These aren't Jazz and Wow earrings. These are handmade earrings by a company called Gillian Therese, um, which is actually a company, you won't find them online, unfortunately. They do like craft sums and stuff. Um, but it's my dad and my stepmother that run it and they make some beautiful jewelry. Most of their jewelry is like the steel, sterling silver worked. I don't know how to describe it. Completely different to the type of jewelry I make, but I love it. And I've got lots of their earrings and actually my girls have got a few pieces of their earrings as well. So this isn't all the fabric that I stress bought. I will just be honest about that. Now you guys know that I am a bit of a stress shopper because I've shared that before. Fabric is the first place I go to and I had a rather stressful week last week. So I decided to cheer myself up and buy lots of fabric. The only problem is I spent a fortune on fabric and money that I probably didn't have on fabric. So after this little haul, I will not be buying myself any more fabric for a little while because I still have two more deliveries to come. So what I'm going to show you today is all from Jenny Stitches Fabrics and Jenny Stitches Fabrics is a lovely little fabric shop. I have been shopping with Jenny Stitches Fabrics for about a year now and I haven't bought anything for a little while which was actually really nice because I kind of curbed my spending habits on fabric. I know if you've been watching me for a while you're probably going you still bought fabric Becky and I have but I haven't been as bad as I have been and um yeah, I thought I'd go back on there and have a look and see what she had. And I bought some beautiful pieces. The other two pieces that I've got, or the other two deliveries that I'm waiting for, are from Pound Fabrics and Rainbow Fabrics. So quite an inexpensive shop, but I did buy a few bits from them. So I did still spend a fair bit of money. The other thing that I wanted to share with you today is two patterns that I have bought. And one of those patterns is a brand new release. So, should we do fabrics or patterns first? Let's do patterns first, purely because there is one one fabric that I want to match with one of those patterns here. So the first pattern that I want to share with you is a sew over it pattern. It's been out for a little while now and it's called the Una dress. Now, sew over it released, I don't know when they released the vlog of the various different hacks of the dress, but I will link that vlog down below. And anyway, I found myself watching that vlog. Uh, it might have only been a recent release. And I really, really enjoyed it. And they basically done this vlog all about the different ways they'd hacked this one very simple, very basic pattern. I'll pop a picture of the pattern in here so you guys can see. 
hopefully I'll pop a picture of the line drawings in if I can find that. And in the vlog, they've shared a skirt that they've hacked from this dress. They've shared a cropped top, a jumpsuit, and a strapless version of the dress with a flounce around the top. And the thing that I absolutely love about the Sew Over It team is the fact that they are all beautiful shapes and sizes. And there are two of the women that I love the shapes of, and it always interests me to see what they're wearing, what flatters their figures that I might like. And to be fair, it was those two lovely ladies that prompted me to buy this dress because I saw the hacks that they'd done and I thought they looked stunning on them. And this dress, when I saw it originally, I looked at it and thought I wasn't that interested because I didn't know if it'd suit my figure. Because it's a very straightforward plain dress and it should be quite a quick make. So I've ordered that. I've, I've got a PDF. So when I'm in the office next week, I'm in on Monday, I'm actually going to go and steal my plotter paper and print the AO version of it off so I can have a play with this pattern. But I do think this would be really nice and it's quite versatile at work with quite a few woven fabrics and there's a couple of different options as to how you can have it. So that's the Una dress by Sew Over It. The next pattern that I've ordered is a Sew Over It pattern as well and it was actually released today so I'm filming this on a when oh no I'm filming this on Thursday and that is the Emily top which is a very straightforward basic top as well. I have I've just gone for straightforward tops. Um, I have another Sew Over It pattern coming my way in my little Miss So and So box this month as well, which is another one of their newest releases. But I really like the look of the Emily top. Now they released this Emily top today. They also released a pair of Kira shorts alongside it, which I was kind of interested in, but I want to wait and see some of the makes go up on the hashtag before I decide to really purchase that pattern. But this pattern, I will pop in the picture, is really versatile. I like the way it gives you a couple of options. You know, there's, there's plenty of patterns like this out there, but it does give you a couple of options. The ST from Tinning the Buttons didn't really work out for me. The top didn't work out for me very well, but I really like the idea of wearing a co-ord set. I have worn the ST trousers a few times and that block really seems to fit my bottom part of the body. So Tilly's top blocks don't fit me at all. Um, I have to make loads of adjustments to make them work. But when I've made their bottom blocks, so any of their trousers, I've actually found that they often fit me really well. So I'm thinking that this Sew Over at Emily top would go lovely with the Esty trouser, Esty, yep, yeah, Esty trousers. And the cropped version would be really nice. But equally, I like the version with the frill. And watching the vlog that Sew Over It actually released, when they talk about this top pattern, they talk about this being cut on the straight, so on the grain line, which means that you could use a border print, um, a scalloped edge to put this frill on because you don't need to cut it on the bias so that just excites me even more I like the fact that you've got the two different neck options as well with it and you've got the various length options but it does look like a straightforward staple and it is for woven which is even better because it can be quite nice and blousy and I think it's again another hackable pattern that you could do lots with so they were the two patterns that I have purchased and I'm really really pleased with them and I cannot wait to get started on them and like I said, I will be printing that one off when I go into work as well, rather than sending it off for copy shop printing, because it would probably take just as long if I was to send it off today anyway for it to get here next week. So it's not one that I'm going to be able to tackle this weekend. And I don't have a printer at home to print it off on A4, unfortunately. Otherwise, the top I would definitely be having a go at. So fabric wise, are you ready to see what I've been purchasing? What to start with? I bought a plain, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fabrics from Jenny Stitches, and only one of them is a plain. Let's start with the plain. So I have bought this denim chambray fabric. No, it's not. It's denim look viscose linen, I think. Oh God, Becky, what is it? I will link it down below. But look at it, it's just gorgeous. And I have a pair of shorts in mind for this. I'd really like to just make a straight pair of shorts just so it can mingle with my other fabrics quite well. Um, there is a meter and a half of this, which I thought would be perfect for what I needed. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a plain fabric. It's not a very Becky style fabric, but it will go with pretty much any color in my wardrobe, any pattern top that I've got, 
any of my red as I'm holding it up against red because it looks nice against the red. I think it will just mingle really well and it's just lovely quality fabric to be fair. Um, I will pop in the comments below or on the screen if I can remember exactly what it is as I'm talking through it. Um, so you can see. So that was the first fabric I got. And like I said, I only got a metre and a half of that. But it is really nice. It's got a little bit of structure to it. I'm sure it's a viscose linen. It feels like a viscose linen, to be fair. Um, it's got a little bit of structure to it. It's just a beautiful colour. I'm going to have to wash it just in case because it feels like it's one of those that's going to run. Although I do try and wash my fabrics. The other um, interesting style fabric that I bought, which is something different to what I'd normally go, go for. It's got pink on it. So that's obviously what drew me to it, was a broidery, cotton broidery on glaze. Broidery on glaze? Broidery on glaze? Yeah, broidery on glaze. How many times can you say broidery on glaze? Um, and it is this gorgeous sort of floral. And it's in these pink colours with this white background. I don't know if you can see the broidery on glaze. There you go. And you can see it there. And it's just stunning. I mean, it would be quite sheer. I think I've got about two metres of this. Can you see me through it? I'm not sure if you can. I can just about see you through it. So I might actually not need to line that and get away with wearing a top and just a nice white bra. Oh, I might do that. I thought it was really pretty and I thought it would be nice. It'd definitely be something that I could wear to work. I could even make like a kimono style jacket out of it that I could wear over a nice top. It felt very summery to me. I did think about the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel again, you know, the one that I've got sitting in my drawer that I haven't made up and the fabric that I've got over there uncut cut to make up. But I did think about that as well. I must admit, we've not got the sun that I was hoping we would have. So here in the UK, we're in July. It's the kids' summer holidays and we're forecast rain for the next two weeks. And it's done nothing but really rain for the last two weeks. And I wouldn't even say it's been warm. I mean, it's not freezing cold, but I was sitting working today with my dressing gown on because I was freezing. And I know that was because I wasn't moving around, but yeah, so it's just not the warmest. And I really want to make warm stuff and the weather's just not warm and the warm weather needs to come back. Stop ranting about the weather, Becky. So I got that broderie and glaze and that was really, really nice. I was really pleased with that. The next fabric that I got, which was a slightly different purchase for me, and this is one I'm tempted to make the Una dress in. So the Una dress is can be made in viscose fabric. It can be made in cottons, um, poplins. So when I say cottons, it can be poplins, voils, and um, or voiles, however you say it, and lawns. And then I got this fabric, which is a sateen. So it is another slightly thicker fabric. But I think because you don't require the drape on that dress, it is quite fitted, and but it's body skimming, it's not body hugging. I think that I can get away with a more structured fabric. So this is a very me fabric. Again, it's like a purpley pink colour and it's just got this kind of floral look to it in these blues I don't know I just think it's really really pretty and I think it would make either a really nice dress or a really nice jumpsuit that's fitted um I'm hoping that makes sense I'm not sure I'd love your ideas on this particular piece of fabric because it is very structured it was called a cotton sateen I do have three meters of it I did purchase three meters of it. I'm not quite sure why I purchased three meters of it, but I did purchase three meters of it. And it is just very, very pretty. And I think these colors would really, really suit me. So if you do have any suggestions for this fabric, pop it in the comments down below. It almost feels thick and structured enough that it would make a really good pair of trousers. The problem is I don't really have any plain tops. Well, I know that means I could go and make some plain tops, but where's the fun in that? So let's talk about, before I go on to the viscose purchases, let's talk about my viscose jersey. Now, originally, and actually this was the whole reason I went on to the Jenny Stitches website. First for Fabrics have this gorgeous fabric in there, and if I can find a picture of it, I know Tamlin was wearing it on her stories yesterday. And they'd sold out of this fabric, and I think it sold out almost instantly. But I found it again on Jenny Stitches. 
and I put an order through for two meters of it because I thought I just really want to make a nice t-shirt with it um, perhaps a t-shirt dress type of t-shirt dress but it was this black background with these beautiful green leaves and these purple pops and it was just gorgeous so on the Jenny Stitches website she called it Alliums I think was the actual name of the fabric anyway she emailed me to say on Monday morning that they didn't actually have that fabric in stock she was ever so sorry would I like something different or would, she, would I just like a refund and I had a quick look on the website I really wanted some viscose jersey I don't have much of it in my stash so and I like the drape of a viscose jersey so I said I'd have this one now the only problem with this one is is stripes which was why I originally was a little bit undecided as to whether I wanted it but those colors really suit me they are a little bit lighter than my colour palette can usually take, but I really, really like them. Now, if it was beautiful, glorious sunshine like we should be having, I'd have a nice tan right now and this would look even better. But unfortunately, it's not beautiful, glorious sunshine, so I don't have a tan. But I think I can get away with them either way. They are a little bit warmer than the cooler tones that, that tend to suit me. But... I thought I've got two meters and I did seriously consider a couple of things for this. So when it came, I didn't want to do a t-shirt because I would feel huge. Um, no matter how I did the stripes, whether I did them that way or whether I did them that way, I'd still feel quite big in them. I always do in stripes. So what I thought I'd do is make a, and the stripes are still going to be there when I say this, but I just mean just having a block t-shirt because that's the kind of preferred style of t-shirt that I have. I thought that I would look at one of the dresses and particularly the Trey Bell dress by Ellie Mack. Now I have this pattern, I've never made it, but I thought I could maybe play with the directional lines of the stripes in that dress. Maybe look at making it, I'm debating at the moment whether to make it short sleeved or sleeveless because of the UK weather, but I just think it would make a really pretty dress. The other dress that I thought of, and I don't own this pattern, but I am tempted to buy it. And that is the Love Notions uh, maxi dress, I want to say. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I'll pop the name of the dress in here. And if I can, I'll pop a picture up so you can see it. That dress is really tempting to make out of this. I don't know how much fabric it would take, but I could make it slightly shorter. But I really just like the way that that dress flows. And I think it's got like seams down here, which in jersey is quite different to see but it would give a really nice fit to it and it would skim my body which is what I want rather than my belly being on show so that was the viscose jersey fabric that I got that is just beautiful so the rest of the fabrics that I've got are all viscose based and the next one I'm going to show you will probably be of no surprise to you now I got three meters of this one I think as well I may have got two meters no it feels like three meters because in my head it was like I need to make a dress with this but look at those colors aren't they just gorgeous and I do think this would make a really nice sew over eve dress now I'm not committing to that because I'll probably get it out and go I fancy making something else with it because that's what I do. I prefer to be a little bit more spontaneous. Sometimes I have a rigid image in my mind and I can't be budged and that is what I've got to make with it. Other times I'm a little bit fluid. And at the moment I am dabbling with thoughts of a Tilly and the Buttons lot dress, maybe not in this fabric, but with instead of making it with the collar that's there because that's the bit I don't like. I'm not, it's really, big collar um i'm thinking of making it with like a granddad collar and i think it would be a fairly straightforward adjustment and now i've worked out what i need to do with tilly's sizing to get them to fit me properly i think that i would be able to make a successful lotter but i digress because this would definitely not suit that because the vision i've got in my head is definitely very summery this is more autumn-y I think personally I think because it's on the black background and it's got those purples but it's also got like these sort of orangey maroony yellow colors um which I can't wear very well but in this with these pop bright pops I think I can wear them really well so I am going to save this to autumn and make something pretty but I do like the idea of a sew over at Eve dress because I'd just put some tights on and a cardigan with that 
and I'd actually wear that to work. I know it's a dress that lots of people make to wear to weddings, but I would wear it to work. I can see a wrap dress or a shirt dress, put it that way. They're the two kind of things I can see that would be perfect for autumn. Any more pattern suggestions? Pop them in the comments below for me. That's autumnal. So, I am building quite a collection of fruity fabrics. I didn't get to take part in the So Fruity Challenge. I had a daisy dress that I really wanted to make out of this gorgeous lemon fabric that I had. I just ran out of time and didn't get an opportunity to make it. It's still there. I still want to make the daisy dress. I still want to make it out of that lemon fabric. But when I was going through some of my stash the other day, I found another piece of fabric that's fruity orientated. I found some fabric from last year that I bought from Rainbow Fabrics that's fruity orientated. And I feel like I've got two, three, maybe four pieces of fruity fabrics. So when I saw this, I was like, I've got to have it. Now, this is a gorgeous orange fabric. Now, I'm hoping that I can get away with wearing this. I always find orange is a funny colour on me. I can either wear it or I can't. And I, but I just love the vibrancy of this. And I just thought this would make a gorgeous dress. Now, watching Jenny's vlogs, she's made this into the Mabel and put this in her window, display window um, in her shop. I don't think I'd make the Mabel out of this. I can't see a Mabel with this, but the quality of this fabric feels lovely. It's a little Johnny fabric. And I do like it. It's got little, little like floral pieces here. And then you've got the oranges all over it. But I am considering now I've bought this with the other fruity fabric fabrics that I've got as to whether I create a little bit like the kit, like kittenish behavior has done it. Her fruity lookbook. I am thinking about doing a collection of fruity makes. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on that. I think I've got three meters of that one as well. So I've got enough there to make something quite, quite nice dress. If in doubt, I go for three. Unless I've got something specifically in mind, I try not to buy two metres unless I know I'm buying it for a top or trousers as a rule of thumb. Viscose jersey, I tend to go with one and a half or two uh, metres for like a t-shirt top. I go for three metres again if I'm trying to make a dress, sometimes four. If I'm making, no, I'm going to make a long dress. It just depends. I only buy specific required fabric if I've got set in stone what I want to make. But like I've just said to you, I like to be a little bit more spontaneous with my makes. I may talk about plans, but please take them as loose plans because they're not always what I'm going to go for. The last fabric I bought, which is just sensational, and this one really was a treat for me. And it's this lovely fabric. I believe this is the Fabric Godmother fabric. I will pop the name of it because I cannot remember down on the screen below. But I just really like the colours on this. I think the blues, the greens, the purple with the mountains in the back. You've got a couple of animals on there. It's just lovely. And I just want to make a top out of this. I didn't have any grand plans. I bought a one and a half metres. In my head, I was thinking maybe the Grain Line Studio Scout Tee, which I know could be made from woven fabrics. Um, I did think about trying to see if I can find a woven wrap top that's maybe got an elasticated channel to describe what I'm thinking in my head. Woven wrap with an elasticated channel that comes in here just to pull it in and give me a, like a nice little waist type thing. And that would make a really nice work top. I mean, the everyday top would be really nice as well, I think. Um, maybe like a little peplum style top would be lovely. If you've got any pattern suggestions please put them below but i only have a meter and a half of this fabric and in most pattern sizes i tend to come out um a 14 14 on top sometimes a 16 so just take that into consideration but yeah i really love this so that is the last piece of fabric i bought from jenny stitches fabrics I will put the link to her shop below. If you haven't been over and have a look, go and have a look. She does usually have some absolutely stunning fabrics on there. I really like Jenny's aesthetic. When I watch, I like watching her vlogs over on YouTube. She is somebody I do watch when she posts and she's just moved shop recently. So I'm hoping that means there might be a little bit more stock coming in. So yeah, that was everything I bought. Let me know what's your favourite piece out of the stuff that I've bought. Let me know if you want to see the other fabrics that I'm going to have delivered. This was a real treat to myself and 
I wouldn't have ordinarily gone and spent that much on fabrics because Jenny Stitches, although she's really reasonably priced, I have bought a couple of more expensive fabrics than I usually would um, from her or more of them. Normally I'd buy one or two nice pieces. So yeah, I'm really pleased with those purchases. So I have, coming up this weekend, I've got my sewing social. I have full intentions of doing uh, my everyday dress or my, the other one I was thinking about was my Mabel top. I'm just hoping that my overlock is all up and working because I like to take that with me to the sewing social. So I do want to get on with them and I've got no plans on Sunday either. So I'd like to get some sewing done on Sunday. So I'm hoping this weekend will be quite a productive sewing weekend if my machinery is all working. Next week, I have a very busy week. I'm in the office for at least three days. So I don't know if I'll get much of an opportunity to sew. But one of the things I would like to try and make a start on next week is the Ogden Cami. I have finally taken the plunge with that pattern and thought I would give it a go. So I have printed it. I actually printed it earlier on this week at work. I printed it on A4 rather than printing because it's such a small pattern. I thought you don't need to print that on AO Becky. So I'm going to stick that all together. I'll probably sit and do that when I get back from Slimmer World tonight. And hopefully the scales will be kind to me tonight. I gave up smoking six weeks ago, which I know is a really bad habit. And I gave up six weeks ago because as you all probably know from the beginning of the year, I was having really severe breathing problems my asthma was out of control and I know that smoking doesn't help so after a very long time of smoking I gave up six weeks ago now on Slimming World I've lost a stone and a half over the past year and over the past six weeks whilst I'm not really eating anymore I am craving sweeter things and not always making sensible choices and I am finding that my weight is starting to creep back up again and I want to get back on top of it I know that my body's got to adjust and everything like that and I'm doing really well from giving up. It was hypnotherapy that helped me and I do recommend it. If there are any of you out there that still, you know, smoke, go ahead and try it. It's a really hard thing to do and I tell you something, it really took the edge off of things for me and has made it a lot easier. So that was a confession of mine, but yes, I'm hoping that the scales tell me something nice tonight. It's very doubtful, but you know, we can hope going in. I will get back to where I was. I will continue with losing and getting to a weight that I am happy with. Anyway, on that miserable note, I'm going to cut out when I get back from Slimming World. Put it that way. We'll finish at that point. Don't forget to give this vlog a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you like this kind of content. Want to see more? Definitely want to see more fabric that's coming your way and some of the makes that I've talked about potentially coming up. I will um, hopefully catch you all on Sunday. I've got no prepared footage for you Sunday whatsoever, so I've got to come up with something in my head, but hopefully it'll be something fun. And I will I wish you all a fantastic weekend and I'll catch you all soon. Happy Friday and happy sewing. Take care. Bye.